This is the Time Dissemination Lab of the National Physical Laboratory, the UK Standards Laboratory. Um, here uh, is where we construct our version of International Atomic Time, um, UTC, uh, and the way we do that is by reference to an ensemble of atomic clocks, some hydrogen mazes and cesium commercial clocks and the data we gather from that ensemble is reported to the International Bureau of Weights and Measures in Paris. They then take our inputs as well as inputs from other standards laboratories and try to work out what a global UTC, Universal Coordinated Time, value is and then they let all the standards labs know just how well they're agreeing with that global average. The, the first atomic clock, the cesium atomic clock, was first operated here at NPL in 1955 by Louis Essen. Uh, and that brought about a very significant uh, change in the way time was determined, leading to a redefinition of the second in 1967 in terms of this microwave absorption uh, in the cesium atom. The first cesium atomic clock back in the late 50s uh, was accurate to about one part in 10 billion. Uh, currently uh, the uh, cesium clock has improved by Im using advanced technologies uh, to be of the order of um, one part in thousand billion billion or alternatively one second in about 158 million years. The current primary cesium fountain clock is a vertical system. Uh, it's about three meters high and uh, getting on for about one meter wide when you think about the extremity of the apparatus. And here what we do is again we laser cool the atoms to very low temperatures and then we gently toss them up into the air so they, they travel up about a meter and then fall back under gravity. Uh, and as they travel up and fall back, we probe them with our microwaves. It has been recognized for two or three decades now that probably you will get better atomic clocks by going to optical absorptions rather than microwave absorptions. And that's precisely what we and other laboratories around the world have been doing for the last couple of decades. Uh, trying to find an optical clock um, that demonstrates the performance significantly better than the microwave standard. And in fact, those are now, uh, um, have been researched and are demonstrating capabilities that indicate about a factor of a hundred improvement over the microwave primary cesium fountain standard. And what we're trying to work out is exactly which one is the best one, uh, if there is a best one, uh, because there are maybe a, a dozen possibilities that, that different labs are looking at. And if we can agree on that internationally, then we will think about redefining the second in terms of an optical clock. Industry needs much smaller systems. Uh, and then there's even an application where you might want to use these atomic clocks in the field. For example, if you're trying to synchronize equipment and you can't see GPS signals, then you want even smaller. And so there is a drive to actually produce uh, uh, clock systems that might be uh, small instruments or even instruments, handheld instruments. We are looking at a number of possibilities here um, at the laboratory. One is to, is to see whether we can build a cesium clock system inside a short piece of hollow core fibre, uh, which would make it very small. Uh, there is an, an analogue 
already there in the marketplace, which is this chip scale atomic clock, which is about the size of a, a large matchbox. Uh, and something like a hollow core fibre could be the same sort of size. The purpose of the Quantum Metrology Institute is to bring together all the uh, quantum metrology work at NPL, so the uh, precise atomic clocks, the control of atoms and ions in single units or strings or clouds, uh, all the precise laser technology that goes with that, um, all the condensed matter work including um, sensors and uh, quantum computing and also the work on quantum communications that we've done recently. The role of NPL is to test and validate some of those technologies so we can um, address some of the barriers to commercialization of these technologies so we can make sure that the, the technologies are working properly, that they do what they're intended to do, and we can, I hope, build some confidence in a potential market that uh, customers can be sure that these new technologies are working well in the new applications.